Matthew chapter 27 verse 44. The robbers who had been crucified with him were also insulting him with the same words. Luke chapter 23 verses 39 through 41. One of the criminals who were hanged there was hauling abuse at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other answered and rebuking him said, Do you not even fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed are suffering justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. John chapter 19 verse 34 but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, members of 3,600 branch churches all over the world, including the United States, Canada, Honduras, Peru, Argentina, Germany, France, Russia, Belgium, Netherlands, and African countries including Kenya, Uganda, and Congo, and in China, Japan, Pakistan, Indonesia, Philippines, Taiwan, India, Mongolia, Egypt, and Korean branch churches and local sanctuary members, those who are attending their service on the internet all over the world, and television viewing audiences. This is the 14th session of the Message of the Cross. In the last session, I told you about the providence in Jesus' crucifixion in which he was nailed through his hands and feet and his clothes were removed. The reason why Jesus was nailed through his hands and feet was to redeem us from the sins that we commit with our hands and feet. If we don't have hands and feet, we would not sin. If Jesus had not shed his blood being nailed on the cross, we would not have been forgiven of our sins even if we repented. We would have had to cut off our hands and pluck out our eyes if we commit a sin with our hands or eyes. If we committed adultery or idolatry, we would have had to be stoned to death according to the law of the Old Testament. But if we just truly repent deep in our heart and turn from our sin, we are forgiven of all sins by the blood of Jesus. How thankful it is if we remember this love of Jesus, we can only love the Lord more and more. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will remember this love always and dwell only in the light. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, because Jesus shed his blood, was cursed and hung on a tree, we who believe in this are forgiven of our sins and are set free from all the curses of the law. Those children of God who believe in Jesus as their Savior and accept Him are set free from disease, infirmities, poverty, and all other kinds of disasters. Therefore, those who have accepted the Lord and are living according to God's Word are always protected. Even if we live by the word, trials and tests still come, but they are tests for blessings. James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. So if you overcome the trials with thanks and joy, God will acknowledge that you have overcome with your thanksgiving. The later part of the scripture says, For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Also, Matthew chapter 5 verse 10 says, Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In a situation where you face hardships acting in righteousness or for the name of the Lord, if you accept them with thanks, you will receive spiritual and material blessings. 
that if you face tests and trials because you did not live by the word of God, what should you do? In this case, you can just repent of your wrongdoing and turn from them. Of course, there are conditions here. I always told you those things. When those who are at the first and second level of faith commit sins, there are sins that can be forgiven if they repent. At the third level of faith, there are sins that they must not commit. At the third level or higher, there are sins that lead to death and other sins that do not lead to death. God tells us not to pray for those who commit sins that lead to death. If you are at the third level of faith or higher, you know what sins that lead to death are. If people willingly commit these sins, they will not be saved, so God is telling us not to pray concerning them. If you are already at the third level of faith or higher, now you have relatively strong faith. So how can you commit sins that lead to death? If you first break the wall of sin and pray with faith, the trials will leave you. But in some cases, you might face difficulties because of people's mistakes, although you did not commit a sin. Even in this case, if you rely on God, He will work according to your faith. For example, on October 3, 1994, Pastor Young Shi Kang, one of core pastors of Manmin Jungang Church, hit an excavator by a mistake while he was driving. In this accident, his car was so badly damaged that it had to be scraped. He barely escaped through the window, but his neck was seriously injured. Because the cartilage on his throat was shattered, if he was not operated upon, his death was 100% certain. Because the bone that blocks the esophagus while breathing and the airway while eating food was completely broken, air was going into his body while breathing. But when he would swallow, it blocked the airway, so he would have suffocated to death. Furthermore, doctors said that after operation, he would not be able to speak, but he did not receive any medical treatment. He left the hospital the next day to come to me and receive my prayer. Then he began to recover, and after three days, he was able to eat. On the seventh day, he felt a tickle in his neck and coughed, and a broken piece of the bone came out amazingly. Surgeons would have had to cut his throat. would have had to cut his throat and take out the broken bone piece, but God made it come out naturally. After that, he recovered, being able to eat solid food and meat. Since then, he has been doing his ministry without any problem. Dear viewing audiences, in case of little babies who cannot show their faith, what should you do? if they get sick or are involved in an accident. In these cases, they can experience God's works by the faith of their parents. Once, a big grape went into the airway of a two-month-old baby and his situation was critical. The grape is called the gobong in Korean, which means big grape because it is really big. The grape went into his lung and blood was pooling in the lung so he could not breathe. The doctors said he had no hope and they could not even operate on him since he was too young. Finally, oxygen supply to the brain decreased and there was a problem in his brain. They said even if he survived, he would not grow up normally. Cells will die if oxygen is not supplied. In this situation, his parents decided to rely on God. And first of all, they repented of not having lived according to God's word. Then after they received my prayer that is recorded in Telephone Automatic Response Service, the ARS, the baby began to recover very quickly. The baby, who was waiting only for death in the intensive care unit, was released from the hospital after a week. A couple of days later, they took an x-ray picture and the parents and the doctors were surprised once again. The baby had no problem with his brain and the grape in his lung was completely gone, even its seeds. 
The Almighty God destroyed it with His power. Dear brothers and sisters, likewise, those children of God who believe in the Lord, if they pray with faith, can receive the answers and blessings in the name of the Lord who redeemed us from our sins. But the greatest blessing of accepting the Lord is that we are going to the kingdom of heaven, not hell. Hell is such a dreadful place. Mark chapter 9 verses 48 to 49 says, Their worm does not die, and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. This describes what kind of punishment will be received by those going to hell. Everyone there will be salted with fire. I saw a vision before in which souls in hell were twisting their bodies as if they were dancing very hard. Just as salt pops up on a hot pan, they were jumping and twisting their bodies because of the pain and heat of the lake of fire. There is not only lake of fire, but also lake of sulfur, which is seven times hotter than the lake of fire. The lake of sulfur is for those souls who commit graver sins than those who are in the lake of fire. The souls in the lake of sulfur were not either jumping or screaming. The pain and agony was so intense that they could not even move their bodies or make any sound. The souls in hell suffered eternal punishment without any rest in the lake of fire and sulfur, and they cannot even die even if they want to. Therefore, the Bible says it is better for us to cut off our hands and feet so that we will not sin and not go to hell. Not long after the opening of our church, God showed me the lake of fire in hell and the fire of sulfur. There is a very large lake of fire. In places like the Galilee prayer house, we can see the mist often in the morning. The water evaporates from the lake and it forms fog that covers the lake. It is such a beautiful scene. I am able to see it often. However, uh, let us say there is a very thick fog. When there is thick fog, airplanes cannot take off or land. Mentally picture this. Now, in this kind of scene, picture only the heads that can be seen endlessly. Those who are in the lake of fire are seen from their chest and up. They seem to be dancing somewhat as if in nightclubs. They dance and shake their bodies in dark places with many lights. Please understand, however, that this is not good. It is just somewhat like the situation. Because it is so hot, their bodies violently twist. Their entire body writes in pain like that. But in the lake of sulfur, people are in it up to their neck. There, they cannot even twist their bodies or make any sound. In the lake of fire, they can at least scream. But in the lake of sulfur, they cannot even scream because it is just too hot. Suppose you are being tortured. Then you can scream when the pain is bearable. If the torture is really unbearable, you can only scream. They cannot even scream in the lake of sulfur. I do not know whether they are twisting their bodies or not because they were visible only from neck up before 
I thought they couldn't even twist their body because it was too hot. But now I think that maybe they are twisting their bodies. But it was invisible since their bodies are obscured in burning sulfur. Anyway, I couldn't see them twisting. But for sure, they cannot scream due to excruciating pain. This goes on forever and ever. It will not end after billions of years. They will have to suffer endlessly in the fires of hell. But the punishments described in the book Hell are actually easy ones. Then when will the eternal punishments of fire of hell be decided for each soul? It is all in the book Hell. There will be a seven-year great tribulation, and after that, there will be the millennium kingdom on this earth. After the millennium is over, there is the great white throne judgment. They will receive the judgment at the great white throne judgment and be thrown into hell. They will suffer in the lakes of fire and sulfur forever. Until then, they will receive punishments that are explained in the book Hell. But in the Hades, before they are thrown into Hell, they have some kind of rest. Let's say a married couple receives the same punishment. If the husband is being tortured, his wife has some rest watching it. But she would just not watch it. She would curse at her husband saying that she went to hell because of him. So they can have at least a few seconds of respite. But those who are thrown into the lakes of fire and sulfur will not have any rest forever. If you have received an injection to get better or applied an ice pack to relieve pain, you can understand. You feel much better if you are relieved from pain for a couple of minutes rather than receiving the pain constantly. It is much better to get a break from it. And there is no rest whatsoever in the lakes of fire and sulfur in hell. But among those who have seen hell by God's grace, some say they saw different kinds of punishments than the lakes of fire and sulfur. They say they saw people suffering from snakes coiling around the body or eagles pecking their eyes. They saw people receiving tortures with spears, swords, and needles. But the Bible definitely says hell is the lake of fire and sulfur. Therefore, the place where other kinds of punishments are given is Hades. Hades is the place where the dead souls who are not saved will be waiting until the final judgment, which is the great white throne judgment. This place also belongs to hell in a broad sense, and the pain is intense, but it is not the true hell. Those souls who receive punishments here before the judgment will go into the lake of fire or sulfur after the judgment. The pain of the punishment in the lake of fire and lake of sulfur cannot be compared to the punishments in Hades. If you know the fear of hell, you will confess from the depth of your heart that it is much better to cut off your hands and feet than to go to hell. When I came to know about this fearful hell, I made up my mind again and again saying, I should not let any of our members fall into this hell. Also, because I feel very sorry that so many souls around the world are going to hell because they do not know the truth, I have been trying my best in the world mission to save even one more soul. Thankfully, those of you who have met and accepted the Lord can be forgiven of your sins through the sufferings that Jesus took on the cross, and you will be able to go to the kingdom of heaven. 
But it is not that you can be forgiven by just confessing with your lips, Lord, I believe. 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light as He Himself is in the light, namely our Father God is in the light and here, light means the truth and goodness itself without any evil at all. And we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus His Son cleanses us from all sin. In this verse, you can see that there is a condition to be met, to be forgiven of sins. The condition is that we have to walk in the light. Nowhere in the Bible, including both Old and New Testaments, does it say that we can be saved even though we continue to commit sins. What God, the prophets, Jesus and Jesus' disciples teach is that we have to cast off our sins and become holy. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Only when we repent, leave sins, and try not to commit sins again and live in the light can we be forgiven of our sins by the blood of Jesus. When Jesus was hung on the cross, many people gathered around the cross and mocked and insulted him. They said, If you are truly the Son of God, come down from the cross now. This is the evil aspect of foolish people who are mocking and insulting Jesus who was dying for them. If we had not known the truth, we would have done the same. But since we came to know the truth and accepted the Lord, we know what a thankful thing it is. While many people were mocking Jesus, there were two criminals who were hung on cross at either side of Jesus. Matthew chapter 27 verse 44 says, And the robbers also who had been crucified with him were casting the same insult at him. But Luke chapter 23 verses 39 to 43 says something different. When one of the criminals hurled insults at Jesus, the other criminal rebuked him. Then, why is there this kind of difference in the Bible? It is the work of God who wanted the readers of the Bible who would read at a later time to feel that scene more realistically. The scene of Jesus' crucifixion could not be recorded by video like today and it could only be written with words. To write everything in detail in the Bible that writes about the human cultivation and the way of salvation, even thousands of books will not be sufficient. In this sense, even the scene of crucifixion had to be summarized and God let it be recorded in such a way that we can feel the scene in the most realistic way. Why don't you just try to imagine this scene? There are three crosses on Golgotha and the crowd that came to watch the scene is talking very loudly around the crosses. The Roman soldiers are blocking the crowd holding their spears and shields. People were standing in a semi-circular shape with the cross and soldiers in the center. Thus, according to which side a person is on, they could hear different things. The crosses were set in a higher place and the crowd was in a lower place. If one was at the side of the criminal who was hurling insults at Jesus, he could clearly hear what the criminal was saying, but he could not hear well what the other criminal was saying. The cross of the Lord was in the center and a person on one side would have clearly heard the criminal near him, but this person would not have heard the other criminal on the other side. So when the criminal on one side rebuked the first criminal on the other side, a person could not hear the second criminal, and it also seemed that the second criminal was talking to Jesus who was in the center. The second criminal would turn his face to the other side and speak, so it seemed that he was talking to Jesus. But they could not hear him well since it was very noisy, 
and there was a lot of jeering, mocking, and spitting going on. Also, since the criminals were dying on the cross, they could not really speak out clearly. In this situation, the criminal who repented rebuked the other criminal who hurled insults at Jesus. But to a person who is at the side of the criminal who is hurling insults, this might have looked like the criminal who repented was also hurling insults at Jesus. But someone who was at the side of the repentant criminal or beside Jesus could clearly hear the words of both the criminals and Jesus and record it correctly. Of course, the Almighty God can let the writer know exactly what happened and let him record it accurately that way. But by allowing this kind of difference in the record, those who read the Bible with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit can feel the actual situation so realistically as if they were watching the scene itself. All 66 books of the Bible were written by God's inspiration, so there is not a single error or flaw. Therefore, when you read the Bible, even if there are things that do not agree with human thought, I hope you will not judge anything with your fleshly thoughts. I urge you to ask God for the spiritual meaning of it and clearly understand the will of God contained in that verse by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Viewing audiences, Jesus suffered many great pains on the cross for many hours and finally breathed his last. John chapter 19 verse 31 says the Jews therefore, because it was the day of preparation, so that the bodies should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. It was Friday when Jesus was hung on the cross. The next day was Saturday, which was the Sabbath for the Jews. Because they could not hang a cursed dead body on a tree on the Sabbath, the Jews asked the governor Pilate to have the bodies and the crosses taken down. If you break the legs of those who are hung on the cross, they cannot support their body weight with their legs anymore, so they suffocate and die more quickly. The two criminals at either side of Jesus were taken after their legs were broken. But it was not the same with Jesus. The soldiers saw that Jesus' breathing had already stopped and did not break his legs. Psalm chapter 34 verses 19 to 20 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, that is, the evil ones dislike the righteous man very much. Although the righteous ones do not harm to them, these evil ones try to kill the righteous ones, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So if our God does not deliver us, we would feel deserted. But God always protects us and delivers us. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. These prophecies in the Old Testament were all fulfilled. Jesus was crucified to take all the sins of the mankind, but Jesus himself was not a sinner. He was a righteous man who was blameless and spotless. God protected Jesus so that none of his bones were broken as prophesied in the Old Testament. Also in Numbers chapter 9 verse 12 or Exodus chapter 12 verse 46, God commanded the people of Israel to eat the lamb but not break the bones. In the Bible, the lamb symbolizes Jesus. So God commanded them not to break the bones of the lamb which stands for Jesus. As prophesied, Jesus' bones were not broken but the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. 
John chapter 19 verse 34 says, "But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately there came out blood and water." Jesus' head and face were covered with blood because of the crown of thorns. Also, his whole body had cuts from the whipping, and his body was in a very wretched condition with blood all over. After seeing Jesus, who was in such a wretched situation, and even after seeing that he was already dead, they still pierced him with a spear. Just as violent animals tear the body of dead animals, they did such an evil and cruel thing. Just by seeing this, we can see how evil man is. Today, sin is prevalent, and it is much wickeder than in the time of Jesus. Even if we show them such clear evidence to believe in God the Creator, evil people still do not want to believe in God. They follow the lust of this world, becoming more stained with sins. Those who are the more evil hate and persecute those who preach the gospel to them. Even if we perform the miracles in the name of Jesus Christ and show them signs and wonders, there are many people who stand against God. Still, Jesus was crucified for all these people. I hope you will be more thankful in your heart for the love of God who gave His one and only Son, and the love of the Lord who gave all His life for the sinner. Dear brothers and sisters, there are also special meanings in Jesus being pierced in His side and shedding blood and water. First of all, this is the proof of Jesus coming to this earth as a man. John, chapter one, verse fourteen says that Jesus is the Word who came to this earth in flesh, which means God, who is spirit, came in a human body. Jesus was not conceived. By the union of man's sperm and woman's egg, but by the Holy Spirit, but he still had the same body and grew up just like a man. Because he came as a man, he had the qualification to become the Savior. The first condition to become the Savior of mankind is that he must be a man. Angels or animals cannot redeem mankind from their sins. Only a man can redeem other men from their sins, so that they can receive salvation. Thus, Jesus came to this earth in human body that had bones and flesh, just like us. He felt the pain when he was whipped, and he also felt tiredness, thirst, and hunger. Matthew chapter four verse two says, and after he had fasted forty days and forty nights. He then became hungry. Also, John chapter four verse six says, "And Jacob's well was there." Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, was sitting thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. Likewise, to prove once again that Jesus had the human body, it writes, "Water and blood came out when pierced with a spear." Secondly, Jesus' shedding of his blood and water testifies that mankind, who has a body, can participate in the divine nature. Namely, you and I can participate in the divine nature too. Matthew chapter five, verse forty-eight says, "Therefore, you are to be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect." First Peter chapter one verse sixteen says, "You shall be holy, for I am holy." They are commands. God commands us to be perfect because He is perfect, and to be holy because He is holy. If you say, "My spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak," it is only an excuse, which does not make sense. It was like that for the people before the Holy Spirit came to them. Our God, the Father, is holy and perfect, so He wants His children to be holy and perfect too. Philippians chapter two verse five says, "Have this attitude in yourselves." And what kind of attitude? 
which was also in Christ Jesus. God tells us to have the attitude of Christ Jesus. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4 says, For by these He has granted us His precious and magnificent promises in order that by them you might become partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. We have to partake in divine nature. Jesus had the same body as man, but he lived a holy life without committing any sins during his whole life. Because he had the same nature as ours, he had the same emotions as man, but he defeated the temptations of the devil and lived on by the truth. He only obeyed God with yes and amen and fulfilled his duty completely. Therefore, we can participate in the divine nature just like Jesus. If anyone believes in the Lord, prays fervently, and tries his best, he can receive the grace and strength of God and the help of the Holy Spirit to be able to cast off sins and evil. Thirdly, Jesus shed his blood and water to testify to the fact that we gain true life and enjoy eternal life through Jesus' blood and water. The blood of Jesus, who had neither original sin nor self-committed sins, is precious blood that has no blemish or spot. We can be forgiven of our sins and enjoy eternal life because Jesus shed his precious blood. Also, water specially symbolizes the word to the extent that we listen to God's word and practice them, we can cast off sins and become righteous. Therefore, the blood and water that Jesus shed is the blood and water of power that can change us and the blood and water of life that saves us from death. The shedding of Jesus' blood and water testifies once again that we are forgiven and gained true life by receiving the strength to live by God's word. Let me conclude the message. Viewing audiences, Jesus walked the way of suffering with joy and thanks thinking that numerous souls would be saved through his sufferings. He did not try to escape from the sufferings until the last moment of the crucifixion. He only prayed until his sweat became drops of blood to accomplish the providence of the Father. He only wanted just one more soul would be saved from the punishment of hell and recover the lost image of God. I hope you will always remember the sufferings that Jesus took for us and his sacrifice and love of shedding his blood and water. Jesus took all the sufferings and shed his water and blood not because of somebody else but because of your sins and to save you. What should you and I do since we received this great love of Jesus? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 to 2 says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. I hope you will realize the love of the Lord deep in your heart and remember it and cast off sins and evil quickly and recover the lost image of God completely. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will enter into the kingdom of heaven on the last day, praise the love of the Lord fully and enjoy eternal life. I will pray for all those who are sick. Place your hand on sick parts and infirmities of your body and receive this prayer. If you are not ill, place your hand on your chest and receive this prayer for the desires of your heart. The work of the Almighty God transcends time and space. He will also work according to your faith. No matter where you are, when you receive this prayer in faith, you will surely experience the astonishing part of God. 
Hallelujah. The Almighty God of love, lay your hand on all your children, on all GCN viewers who receive this prayer on television. Lay your hand and manifest your work that transcends time and space on every viewer who receives this prayer in faith in every corner of the world. Give each of them the faith by which they can believe and drive out all the power of negative thoughts and doubts. Drive out all trials and sufferings. Scorch by the fire of the Holy Spirit and cleanse with the blood of our Lord from head to toe, the five versera and the six entrails, each joint and all nerves, tissues and cells. Manifest the most high part of creation. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, bacteria and weaknesses go away. All contagious diseases go away. All terminal diseases, endemic diseases, and newly discovered diseases, be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, be cleansed, be strengthened. Let there be healing of gastric cancer, lung cancer, uterine cancer, intestinal cancer, and skin cancer, age, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, heart diseases, lung diseases, all kinds of women's diseases, hypertension, hypotension, diabetes, skin diseases, and inflammation. May polio, paralysis, arthritis, and herniated disc be healed and made perfect. May the pain from lumbar, headache, and neuralgia disappear. May all after effects from a variety of accidents be cleansed and made perfect. May cold, flu, fatigue from sickness, and thyroid diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. Epilepsy, autism, depression, nervous breakdown and all kinds of mental diseases go away. May all darkness be driven away and let there be joy and peace in their hearts. Father God, by the most high power of creation, may all that is weak be made perfect and whole again. May all that is paralyzed become loosened and may the crippled walk and jump. May the deemed eyesight be brightened. May those with troubled hearing hear well. May the blind receive sight. May the deaf come to hear. May the mute begin to speak. Father, bless those who are unable to conceive. Rejoin broken bones. And make perfect and whole all burned parts of the body. Cleanse by the fire of the Holy Spirit those who suffer from addiction of narcotics, drugs, toxicants, and poison. May the dead and dead nerves and cells revive. May all darkness be forced away, and may all evil spirits be driven out. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, go away. May all their messengers be also driven out. May all the power of darkness, evil and wicked spirits, dishonest and crafty spirits, estranging and deceiving spirits be driven out. May all chains of injustice be loosened. Darkness go away. May the light come. Father God, strengthen their spirits as well as their flesh. Give them the strength to call out to you. Give them the strength to throw away their sins and become sanctified. As each of their soul gets along well, may all in life go well with them, answer the desires of their hearts, imploration and prayer. Add faith, hope, and love, and may their families also come to hear and believe in the good news. Protect them from accidents and disasters, and bless them to lead prosperous lives without hindrance. Protect all God's children at home, work, and business with the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit, and the eyes of the Lord that are like blazing fire. Bless them whether they come in or go out, and bless them to lend to many people but borrow from no one. Give them wisdom and understanding, and allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give all ministers and workers of the Lord the ability to carry out the tasks you have given them. May there also be great revival at each church. Lead your children so that they may give glory to you, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do in life. 
Manifest your work so that their lips may testify, I have met him, I have experienced God, I have received his answers, and I have received God's blessing. Father God, I thank you. May you alone receive all the glory. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.